Welcome to Lesson 7.1, Basic Integration Rules. In this lesson, we're going to review many of the techniques for integration that you've already learned. Uh, so what you want to do is look at this table I have here on my left. Go ahead and review each one of those techniques. And if any of them sound unfamiliar or you need some more practice on them, go back and review before we begin this lesson. So our first problem is to simply evaluate this integral here. Now this one shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, you should recognize this is a standard u substitution. Uh, you can very easily be the expression underneath the radical, uh, forcing du to of course be 2x dx. Now if that's the case, of course, you can see how u will fit here, our 2x dx. Uh, we can force that to happen if we multiply that by 2, balance it with a 1 half on the outside allowing us to have the integral 1 half u to the negative 1 half du. Now that shouldn't be too hard of an integral to uh, calculate. It'll just be 1 half uh, u to the positive 1 half over 1 half plus c. Now, of course, the 1 halves are going to cancel out, leaving us with just u to the 1 half. Uh, written differently, the square root of x squared minus 4 plus c. Here we are in example B. Uh, this one looks similar to the last one, but it seems like there might be a difference here. Uh, notice that we do have that x hanging out in front of the radical, and that's going to cause some problems. Uh, however, if you did memorize your trig functions, uh, your inverse trig integration formulas, I should say, uh, you might recognize that uh, u squared is right here and a squared is right here. And we have u on the outside. Now that looks a lot like a uh, very familiar formula that we have, uh, something along the lines of du over u square root of u squared minus a squared. Well, sure, that's the arc secant formula. So arc secant, uh, this is 1 over a, arc secant of u over a. So really, we don't have to do a whole lot of work here. We've already identified uh, that u is x, a is 2. And so it's just a matter of saying this is one half uh, arc secant of x over 2 plus c. Didn't require a whole lot of work. It was just a basic formula. In our next problem, uh, we have an integral that has two terms in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle those terms separately. So I'm going to break this up into the integral of x dx uh, minus 3 times the integral. I'm moving the constant outside. Uh, 3 times the integral of 2x plus 3 to the negative 2 uh, dx. So this first one right here, this is a, a fairly easy integral to deal with. That's just going to be 1 half x squared plus c. Uh, that's basic. Uh, as far as this other integral, this one right here, I see that we're going to have a u substitution in effect. We're going to try to say that u is 2x plus 3 which is all fine and dandy, uh, du will be 2dx, that's going to be an issue. Uh, to handle that, I'm just going to stick a 2 out the front, and I'll divide by 2 here to balance out. And now I do have my u, uh, and there's my du, the 2dx. Uh, so in doing that, I'm going to have minus 3 halves. The integral, this is going to be u to the negative 2du, and I can take care of that one no problem, that's just simply going to be uh, minus 3 halves. This will be u to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. And uh, the two plus c's I'm going to stick together. I'm going to simplify this a bit. And I'm going to end up with 1 half x squared. Uh, this will be plus, uh, because we do have the negative 1 on the bottom, so that's going to be plus uh, 3 over 2 uh, times the u to the negative 1, which is just going to be 2x plus 3 on the bottom. And, uh, of course, don't forget your plus c. Here in example d, uh, we have a situation that looks very similar to our first example, example a. Uh, the difference is now we have two terms in the numerator, and we're going to have to determine if that really matters at all, uh, if we're going to need to split the numerator up, uh, or if we can just handle it the way it is right now. So let me just go ahead and start with the u substitution. That seems to be a common theme here. Uh, I'm going to let u be the part under the radical again, just like I did in the first example. So u will be x squared plus 2x minus 4, leading du to be 2x plus 2 uh, with the dx. Now, looking at the numerator, uh, I can turn the numerator into this du. 
by simply multiplying it by 2. There we go, that's 2x plus 2, exactly what du is. Balance it with 1 half outside, and I have another one of these uh, 1 half integral of u to the negative 1 half du. Again, just like the first example, very similar. So if I want to integrate that, it's just going to be 1 half u to the positive 1 half over 1 half plus c. Uh, these 1 halves, just like in the first problem, they are going to cancel. And what I'm left with is simply u to the 1 half, which I'm going to rewrite as the square root of x squared plus 2x minus 4 plus c. So example E brings us to one of those problems where a simple u substitution may not work. Um, certainly I can drag this 2, uh, it being a constant, I can drag it to the front of the integral. But there's no way for me to split this fraction up. If I let u be the denominator, x plus 4, that's great. Uh, it tells me that du equals dx, but I still have this, what I call rogue x, sitting around. And I don't know what to do with that. Fortunately, I can take my u substitution, solve for x on that, and now I have a formula for x, and I can take that and plug it in here. If I do that, I'm going to get 2 times the integral of x, which again is u minus 4, and I will have a u on the bottom. There's my du, du is dx. This I can split up. This I can split up. This I'm going to split up into 2 times the integral of u divided by u, which just leaves me the du, uh, minus, I'm going to move the 4 out front here, leaving me with the integral of 1 over d, uh, 1 over u, du. And fortunately, both of these I know how to deal with. What I'm going to end up with here, uh, when I integrate du, I'm just going to get u, uh, plus c, of course, but I'll add that on at the end. And when I integrate this, I'm just going to get minus 4 natural log of the absolute value of u, and uh, there's my plus c. Can't forget that. Uh, so if I go ahead and distribute this, I get 2u minus 8 natural log of u uh, plus 2c, but, or c. Let me go ahead and uh, substitute back in my x's. I'm going to have 2 times u, which we defined as x plus 4, minus 8 times the natural logarithm of absolute value of x plus 4, and there is my c. So example E brings us to something that finally looks a little bit different. I'm still going to use the U substitution, but it's not going to be something that's under a radical this time or anything like that. Uh, I do have an E to the cotangent X. And whenever I see E to something, I always try to let that exponent be the U. It doesn't always work out, but it's always worth a shot. Uh, if U were to equal cotangent X, uh, DU would be negative cosecant squared X, DX. And fortunately, there is a cosecant squared x. All I'm missing is the negative sign, but that's really no problem. I can just put a negative there and one there to balance it out. And now take a look what my integral has become. It's negative integral of e to the u du. And uh, e to the u, one of my favorite functions that integrates to e to the u plus c, uh, which I, if I rewrite back in terms of x, is simply negative e to the cotangent x plus c. If that seems too simple, try differentiating this. Don't forget the chain rule. You'll end up right back at our original integral. For our final example on lesson 7.1, uh, we have this problem dealing with the slope field in a differential equation. Now, all the problem says is to graph the solution that passes through this initial point. Uh, but I actually want to find the solution analytically. Because I can. Why not? Uh, so the slope field for this differential equation, to make a slope field, all I need to do is make a graph and put in some values. Uh, Any time that y is 0, I see that my slope will be 5. So I'm going to end up with a bunch of very, very steep uh, pieces of slope here at y equals 0. Uh, let me jump up a little bit. Let's say uh, y equals 1. For y equals 1, every piece of slope is going to have a slope of 4. So I'll go over and make them all 4. It doesn't look like I'm going to reach the whole way to 5, so let me keep going. Uh, at 2, each slope will have a, uh, every piece of slope will have a slope of 3, and so on. When y is 4, uh, they'll all have a slope of just 1. And here's the magic. When y is 5, all of the slopes are going to be 0. Interesting. 
anything higher than five, like six, let's say, is actually going to have a negative slope. And of course, the higher we go, the more negative that slope is going to get. So here's a slope field uh, dealing with this equation right here. It wants us to graph the solution that passes through uh, the point zero comma one. The point zero comma one is right here. And uh, it looks like it's going to come from below, rise up quickly, and then kind of even out. Uh, my guess is that this is going to be asymptotic to the line y equals 5, maybe something like that. Well, we can go ahead and actually find out for ourselves what's going to happen here. Uh, if we separate this equation into dy equals 5 minus y dx, and then divide both sides by 5 minus y, what you might notice is that we have a differential equation here. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a natural log over here, but let me go ahead and integrate both sides. Over here, if I let u equal 5 minus y, hopefully it's pretty clear that du is going to equal, well, negative 1 dy. So I do need a negative here, and I'll balance with 1 outside. This equation on the left becomes negative uh, u to the negative 1, and then uh, du. Of course, u to the negative 1, that's kind of like saying, uh, you know, 1 over u. And that is going to be a natural log. Uh, over on the right side, we have the integral of dx. That's just going to be x plus c, clearly. So if we go ahead and do this, we're going to get negative natural log of 5 minus y equals x plus c. Um, I'm going to take this negative and move it up here using the properties of logarithms. And now I'm simply going to exponentiate both sides. Uh, of course, the e and the natural log cancel. What I have here is 1 over 5 minus y. What I have over here, uh, c e to the x. So I'm almost there. Uh, if I do want to solve for y here, which I believe I do, uh, I can just reciprocate both sides. Uh, so I'll have 5 minus y. I did the reciprocal of the left. If I do the reciprocal of the right, I'm still going to leave c, but it'll be e to the negative x. And from there, hopefully, we can figure out that y is simply going to be 5 minus c e to the negative x. Now, the situation is I do have an initial value, so I need to use that in my general differential equation. It tells me that uh, y is 1, fantastic. Uh, it tells me that uh, x is going to be 0. So I'll have 5 minus c e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so there we go. And it looks like that uh, C is, in fact, going to be 4. So that makes me believe that my final equation here, and I challenge you to graph this using your calculator to verify that it's correct, is going to be Y equals 5 minus 4 E to the negative X. Graph it and see for yourself that that does represent this blue curve. Unfortunately, uh, in these notes for 7.1, we didn't get the opportunity to cover uh, all of these different techniques for doing integrals. However, many of them should be fairly common to you. Uh, expand if you have something like uh, x plus a to some power. You can always expand it out and have a full by, uh, polynomial. Simply integrate each term. That's easy enough. Separating the numerator, um, that's when it would be easier. Uh, when you can't fit the entire numerator into one integral, you can always split it into two integrals. Uh, completing the square is really helpful in doing those arc sine, arc tan, arc secant problems. So if you see uh, part of what looks like a binomial squared in the denominator, consider completing the square. Uh, dividing improper rational fractions will generally lead to a polynomial plus something over um, the numerator, which a lot of times that can be integrated with a natural log. Uh, but you have a very nice polynomial to work with then. Adding and subtracting from the numerator not entirely common. Using a trigonometric identity, not entirely common. Uh, using a Pythagorean conjugate, not entirely common. But they're all good techniques to know. In this homework for 7.1, uh, you will get the uh, opportunity to experience many of these different techniques and others. Uh, just don't forget about your use substitution. That will come in very, very handy as we proceed, um, and especially handy as we continue through Chapter 7. Good luck on your homework, guys.